Uh, right, so you're back for another virtual edition of the Escapade Show, and we are delighted to be joined with Anthony Cristaldo, who is a techno DJ and music producer with loads of amazing releases and a very nice guy. Now, we've just met there uh, five minutes ago, so how's it going, Anthony? You good? Oh, good, guys. Thank you for having me. How about you? We are, we are, uh, we are very pleased to have you on. So... How have you found? How have you found lockdown? What's what's been happening? I mean, in the beginning was everything. I mean, not nice, of course. You know, people is dying and it's dangerous to go outside. But I have more time for me and family, and of course, music is has been nice in the beginning. But now it's kind of getting weird. Like the inspiration is kind of dying because I literally live the same day every day for months now <laughs> so it's nice but i really hope to everything will end soon what is different about your day in lockdown compared to a normal day i mean uh, you know i had more time of course now i'm spending 24 hours with my family then it's the biggest inspiration because is what I love and, st- yeah. and stuff, but you know, going out with friends, going to party and meeting a lot of friends and having fun, it was the biggest inspiration as well. Like, especially going on parties and meeting a lot of friends, DJs, and be on the crowd, be on boots is 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 nice, you know, and it does fire me a lot. See, I think that now because DJing is a very intimate thing that when you're behind the DJ booth, you're, you're with lots of people. I think some of that may change now. Uh, yes. It, yeah, of course, you need to keep the distance and stuff. Uh, uh, we don't really know when everything is, will be back to normal. And, you know, that's kind of been the painful part of the, this situation. But we just need to be strong and keep working hard. Yeah, no that's all we can do. No longer can you give a USB stick to your <laughs> <laughs> It never worked with me, to be honest. You know, in the beginning, Sonar, AD, I tried to give them a run, but it never worked. <laughs> the, the only thing I, I found out that, you, that worked during the time is like meeting pe- people in person, like be there and try to be confident with them, talk to them about life, about music, and just be yourself. At what point, Anthony, did you decide that being a music producer and DJ, at what point do you think that's what I want to do, you know? Yeah, for me, it's been a passion forever. Yeah, I was living, I mean, I, I born and grew up kind of till 12 years old in Naples. Then I moved in a small city called Pescara, especially Francavilla Al Mare. It's a really, really small, small countryside. Not countryside, but really small. And since then, you know, I was, it was nice. I was growing up okay. And then I found out doing the same stuff every day with my friends was kind of annoying. So I kind of closed up myself in my room and started to do music. Just, it was, it's been a passion forever. Music helped me a lot to go through a lot of stuff and start to produce was something nice for me. I never done for money or for being successful. I'm done because, you know, people like to go to the gym. I like to do music and no one is here to judge. No one is just you, uh, yourself and music. Was there any particular artist then that inspired you to do music? Yes, yes. Uh, of course, Adam Bayer, Dub Fire back in the past, Rishi Otin, you know, the one that inspires everyone. But I start to do, really score this music when the minimal at the huge boom. You know, my yeah, first yeah. first release is proper Milliman to be crew and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's where I come from. Well, that's that's very cool. We've um, I mean, in the studio, we love all genres. Big gal likes, I mean, hip hop and uh, a yeah. lot of progressive sounds. Myself, I, I grew up listening to trance and, and hardcore music. I mean, so, I, I was listening yeah. to progressive house in the beginning. You know, it was. Yeah, I start to listen to this music. Also, when it was Tribal House, you know, in Naples, they were huge, huge festivals. And my uncle, this is CD, and it was recorded on the biggest club in Naples. And I discovered this kind of music. But I, I stopped there, you know, I was too young to understand what it was. But it really fascinated me and said, wow. 
Cool. Now, CM before lockdown happened then, Anthony, what, what sort of stuff did you have on the horizon or planned in before everything got locked in? Because we've been speaking to lots of friends and DJs and so many people had 2020 as the big year. And then it's like, stop. So, and we're all in the same boat. So what about you? What things did you have uh, coming up? Uh, I mean, until September, if everything was nice, because I'd like in six months, I had a huge release. I've been released on odd music, uh, in tech, and then of course, drum cook. And to this year was like, I said, you know, now is the year to work hard and to let people see who am I. And then everything happened, you know, this stuff is just, of course, the, the, the year is just begin, but it's just really hard to do music in these circumstances. Of course, I'm not a sound engineer, you know, I, all the music I do is just because I feel that way. And now I'm not feeling much, <laughs> honestly. It's just really, really hard for me. Well, and I'm not even listening to techno at the moment. So music has emotions, isn't it? So it's like... Yes, I mean, for me, it's, make music, whether it's happy music or whether it's darker stuff, you know. Um, I do most of my music when I'm during the dark period, so now it's just that makes sense. Nothing is just time. yes. <laughs> you know, I do have a lot of. Uh, I like melodies in my music. I like uh, these kind of vibes. Then try to. I kind of say that I'm a storyteller. By right? of mm -hmm. course, without vocals and without. It's hard to, but techno does have this power as well. Yeah, you know, of the, the fans then follow this kind of music. It, they can be emotional. People can cry on our music. You know, it's, most of the people that doesn't follow this style, they will never understand. It's just yeah. boom, 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 and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> but, it's, but it's, education, like it's, it's education, like anything, you know. Of course, experiences. Of course. It's when you're in the right setting or the right club or the right friend. Just mm. shows you that you know at the at that time, and you're like, oh, I understand now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know, it does to me. It does give a lot of emotions, and even if nowadays everything seems similar, even in the music industry, like they just sound all the same, it's hard to find that that kind of music. Even if for uh, like new producer and stuff, if it does give me goosebumps. For me, you know, I will start to follow them and it's all a new world. I don't care if it's a huge name or not, yeah. but soon it does give me sort of emotions and, you know, I can reproduce in music. It's just nice. So tell us about um, your studio, like, setup, what you use and maybe some of the favourite things that you like to use when you're producing techno. I uh, never had, like, huge studios until now. Uh, literally, until last year, I was doing... Uh, uh, my out uh, of studio with a friend of mine, but it was a really small room. And by, you know, it's in these intimate rooms and stuff, then, you know, you yourself. Now it's kind of big, but I need to soundproof and doing stuff. Also, my neighbor is locked down and she's quite old, so I cannot literally do loud music and this more, more annoying. Mm. Um, we used to have a lot of analog stuff, and but to be honest, I never had enough time to learn them. So I've already almost done all my music with ST and stuff. Okay. So this year, as I moved, we kind of not split up, but of course, everyone took the stuff that we had. Uh, to be honest, all, all I needed was the monitors, the DIN audio, and keyboard. That's it. <laughs> Listening to your music, it sounds like there is hardware analog like sounds in there. Uh, not really. I mean, it does sound like That's because a good I do, That's a good yeah, thing. I do. I do process a lot of the sound, you know, kind of distortion and make them really dirty. But I've been using analog stuff back in the past just to do background sounds mm, to okay. make the the kind of crispy and dirty stuff. But I do process every synthesizer like VST with a lot of VST to make them really not dirty, dirty, but to sound yeah. right. more real. Yeah, yeah. So what um, like plugins or VSTs are you using to create that? I use Di Diva, Predator, Silent a lot. You know, most of the people really hate Silent because it does have fake sounds. But if you know to make them dirty and real, I love it. Yeah. Um, machine, 
really, really basic stuff. A lot of stuff from waves, you know, compression, fab filter, a lot for delays, filters, and this kind of stuff. I try to learn something new all the time, so I want to, you know, not repeat doing the same music. Or, of course, I can. I found out my style like three years ago, you know, who I am and what I, I can do. I try to follow that way, but I try to learn something new and put something new in, like always update myself with a new sounds or a new way to work. How's I keep it? learning. Yeah, and, and how did you originally learn? Are you on Ableton? Do you use yes, Ableton? Yes, yes. So how did you originally learn? Because a lot of our fans and students that come to the studio, that's maybe one of the biggest things that they face when they start off is actually how to learn it and how to keep going and stay motivated to keep going because at the start it's very difficult. As I said, I do music for feeling good, no, because I need to prove something to someone. And it's always been this way, you know, nothing I had in the beginning, nothing I have now. I keep doing and working hard just because I want to prove myself then I can do can do more all the time. Of course, if gigs and you sign big labels, of course, it, it does make you happy. But until now, even if I release some good labels, I still have some no, like some closing doors because it's the way it, it should be. You know, you keep it doing... As soon as they refuse you, you say, well, why? Of course, music is, um, you know, if something does, some artist doesn't like your music, doesn't mean that's not good. You know, it depends on the mood and you are, of course, the style. It's opinions, isn't it? It's just of course. Opinion. Yes. Yeah. You can not like, you know, be liked from everyone. It's just yeah, the way music is. There's a, an interesting point where, and um, when it comes to producing anything, it's like if you can just build, if you like the thing you're making, whether it's music or videos, you know, a lot of people won't like it, but there'll be a, there'll be a percentage of people that really they like it. like, of course. So that's, of course. What you're, that's what you're after, isn't it? Like, mm. people to you just need to be yourself. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you're going to end up soon. Yeah. Well, you're going to try and copy and be something you're not, and really that will only last so long. <laughs> yeah, that that's my you know the way I think to be honest. I have to be honest, I mean, everyone has been on the step of like oh shit, I want to release on this huge label, I want to sound like that. But then I found out every time I, I was trying to do that, it never worked. It was just rubbish because it wasn't myself. Taking inspiration is good, but just copying and be all the same. You know, now the wave is okay, it's this way, but it will change, and you probably will not be able to repeat that yeah. new wave you're yeah. gonna end that, up like that's the whole thing isn't it it's like why make something that's already out there because by the time you try to sign your one it may be it's gone yeah. For a yeah, year it's two gone. yeah and it's already an old sound so you mm. have to stay true to yourself so talk a little bit about express yourself then that was on drum code that is, is that the biggest release for you today is that the biggest uh yes yeah of course drum code was dream like i've been sending them Demos probably from 10 years yeah, since, the, <laughs> since the beginning. But I, I found out, you know, if Adam doesn't play your music, it would be impossible to release. No, kind of impossible to release there. He started to play my music probably two or three years ago. And, you know, it does make me really proud because I was following him since the beginning. And, uh, you know, when he start to kind of play your music out, he's like, you start to have chance, like, oh my God, he's listening to my music. Then I'm going to drum co party like forever because it was, you know, I kind of knew some of them and it was nice to be good together. And, and I had the chance to have his private email. You know, I've been keeping sending him like demos forever. He was just listening and sometimes downloading, but never answers, no nothing. Then, uh, you know, I may uh, take my body and express myself yourself and uh, send out them as a promo. You know, I was released like, uh, they were done like two weeks before or one week before the, the sonar party. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't say anything. And then I found out they played both of the tracks of the sonar, Enrico San Giuliano and Adam Bayer. You know, that was a dream. And then um, I still have, I didn't have any answer and stuff then. Uh, Adam came and said, uh, the various is full, I'm sorry, and this kind of stuff. Then he played 
uh, express yourself at the resistance in Ibiza one day. And the manager uh, emailed me the day after, say like he wants the, the truck. It's, it's still free. So it so, happened very naturally then? Yes, yes. And it was really fast as well. You know, in the beginning it was no because the, the various was full. Then I don't know what happened and, you know, he convinced himself that the track was good enough to release that. Because, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen this exact thing happen with Stephen many times where he's maybe tried to hit a label and years of no and then eventually they sign it. So talk a little bit about the resistance of not letting that affect you too much and continuously keep sending and sending and understanding of, that yeah. just because they say no doesn't mean that it's no forever. Of course, of course. I mean, I never give up because, as I said in the very beginning, I keep repeating like I'm always myself. And you keep trying. Of course, you need to understand what's your style. If it, it, does, it can fit on, on the label, of course. Like if I would never send uh, my stuff to like really... Art, art music style label because it doesn't fit me and we never fit the label you need to understand your your way but you, the way where you could release the the thing that i really appreciate about adam is that he tried to be like listen to each drugs and he does answer like he does he's proper label manager he's probably the boss you know he does, he does do everything by himself of course he does he does have like huge team behind him. But I try to be on that on new people and try to, of course, give, try to help a new emergent as well. But it does really need to like them style and does need to, uh, you know, they need to sound unique in a, in a way because he doesn't want another Enrico San Giuliano or another Leighton Jordan. He wants something that has a proper style and, and, Sorry, I lost everything. I was, we were thinking about uh, sending events. Yeah. No, no, I think yes. what you were saying there is, is really, really great advice. Um, that, you know, they don't want another Enrico San Giuliano. Of course, of course another, not. They yeah. have them already. and They have them and, and about being unique to yourself and your own inspiration. Mm. That was really good, really good advice for, for all the, the listeners and, and followers of the studio. Yeah. He's, he did sign Express Yourself because it was the style that was working on, like, for three or four years, you know, he does really represent me, the kind of scenes and melodies. So he knew then the track was me and probably is what he did appreciate about me. But, you know, I keep sending music on, and to be honest, at the moment, I'm not sending, sending a lot of stuff out because I'm not 100% sure. All I have is just one EP then is for unreleased, then will be out in June. And it does contain uh, Take My Body, and you know it's the most request track that I have because it was played as, together with Express Monster yourself and it does have like huge vocal then it was made by me and it also they you know it makes me proud but it's also quite old now because it been played last year by music you know you need to create all the concept around the track you, you cannot just release one track mm. and of course they need to match each other and yeah, we, you know, you need to deliver a full package. That's you also an important point about creating a concept mm. rather than uh, a concept and a story, I suppose, storytelling, yes. and how each track works into the next and, and stuff. Of course, of course, you can all just release whatever. Yeah. Also, you will not fit with the label. When can you say you're really, you know, it's ready because you, there you were saying, I'm not sending anything. Uh, yeah. so when, because no one knows. No no one knows. No, yeah, no I one don't knows. know when it's ready, but when I feel kind of proud, you know, uh, since the beginning, it was really hard for me to play out my music because I was 100% sure. Also, you listen to your tracks, you know, out. Two, yeah, 2000 times a day and you just bored of that. But what I found out then is the, if you f finish your track like in one, two days and, you know, you do, you do put a lot of effort, of course, because it's your music. But when you try to, f when you finish, like it does come out to close the track, that one is the track then somehow we will sell and we will, you know, I've been doing a lot of emotional music then, you know, make me, give me goosebumps and stuff. It didn't sell because I don't know, it's, just the way it is, you know, the simple track, the way 
always works, like mm -hmm. um, concept of infinity, lost in consciousness, or express yourself. It was done really quickly. I because think probably that, that probably that day I was feeling that way. You know, you really, I as soon you start the loop, you finish that. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely, I hear that from a lot of producers that the ones that are finished um, quickly and effort, effortlessly, like you know, those ones are the ones that are signed quickly and, and they really yes. resonate with people in, in the audience. I don't know what that's all about. That's strange. Oh, yeah. It's strange. It's really strange. You know, and yeah, when you cross an AP, then... About, something about energy or something. <laughs> Usually, like, probably Express Yourself was done really quickly. Really, really quickly. Probably two days, three days, because, you know, I wasn't doing music, like, full-time. And I keep working on the same track, of course, to make sure that it, it sounds good. But it was done quickly. The idea, as soon as you finish the idea and you come, you know, the next day in studio, you can improve the mix down, you can improve some compression, equalization and stuff. But it was done quickly as it was lost in consciousness and concept of infinity. Cool. It's funny how you could spend maybe six months on a track or one will not work, and you'd yeah. be like, this yeah. is the best track I've ever played <laughs> and no one cares. And then something I, done like that, you're like, nah, I don't think this will go any good. Drum code or whatever. Um, but it's, it comes yeah. naturally in that, in that. I think that's the most important part for anyone listening. Even on, on the track was released on Intec. Uh, it's called Kalt. Then in German it means cold. It was done with a friend of mine. He did huge vocal for me in German because we try, we were trying to do something new and I said, okay, I like this style, you know. Let's try to bring something that was going back in the past. In the past, you know, they were doing a lot of rave tracks with the German vocals. So <laughs> I said, okay, let's do that. But to be honest, I didn't feel the track very much. And in the end, you know, it got released on Intech and it was like top 20 on Beatford. Like, what the fuck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the face of love then does have, you know, my vocal, emotional melodies, it didn't sell. Mm. Strange. It's, it's never, strange. You just need to create and see what happens. Of course. Of and, course. and enjoy it. What you were saying earlier about just doing music for the enjoyment and not putting any expectations on things. You know, Of course, be, you know, try to release on certain labels and then you keep mind and I want to work out because I want to release that. It's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's a no, it just, you know, you don't kill yourself. Or... It doesn't mean it's a failure. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It does mean then you need to work harder to get there. Plus, it probably shouldn't be easy to get on the biggest label. No, of course not. Be. Of course not. Be. Exactly. That's awesome. So uh, it's hard. It's can sometimes it you know it's kind of super hard like to release on s some labels. But as I say, it's nothing impossible. You know, you can prove yourself. Yeah. And improve and keep learning and try to give your, your best and be uh, once again unique. Because sounding with like someone else, it does it doesn't go anywhere. Like today, you can go on top ten, and then in next year will be probably disappear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Music, music, so recyclable nowadays. Yes, yes. No, it, unfortunately, a song from last year is old. You know, but it's, we say, it, it, a DJ set you should play from every year. You know, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't always just be new. But in terms mm. of the listener and even Spotify, I look at my own listening habits and I'll listen to, you know, the same songs over and over until I'm bored. And then the next month I'm on yeah, to, you know, and, and then it just ends up, oh, that's old. But it's, it's a strange world. But it's also because nowadays they keep releasing a lot of music. So it's, it's hard to get close to a track because... Every Friday or every Monday, does you know, Beatport does release huge amount of music, and you know, back in the past, it was harder to do music because it was expensive, and when something was get released, you know, you get kind of really connected because you will listen to the track probably for the last, you know, the whole year. Yeah, and probably you had the chance to connect more with that artist and to that track because it. This is the only track you are, you know, in that time. I think that's why concepts are so important now. Mm. So you're buying into not just the song or the track, but you're, you're buying into a concept that will last longer. Of course. Yeah, I mean, you can try that. Yeah. And um, we still got 10 minutes. Still got 10 minutes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, what I try to do is also then something that you makes you proud when you listen probably in uh, one year, two years, you know. I try to do this kind of music and will make proud me proud in, in the next following years. Of course, in the past, I did some horrible music and, you know, I was doing everything to get released. But I'm, today I'm kind of disappointed because I rushed myself quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But in the last two or three years, I just found out, you know, some way to be happy and to release my awesome. stuff. And and Stephen, by gal, you always say as well, it's like, try your best to enjoy the journey more. Of course. And slow down. Like, I'm, I was exactly the same. Release, release, release. Exciting. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, boom. But now it's like, slow it down. Slow the mind down. And, and you know, and, and make the tracks, you know, make them feel a bit, like there's more emotion to it. They're not rushed yes. out, you know, and stuff. So. I also I think mean, if you look at the, if you look at some of the biggest artists in the world, there's some people that release an album every three years. Yeah, you know, even they, like sometimes they want you know when you leave them wanting more, then mm. they're like, when's he going to release again? When's he going? You know, That's leave them a year or two, and then. <laughs> I mean, big artists can do that, like because yeah, they have a huge following and they're being touring or forever. So it's hard also to do music, but I think you should do kind of three or four releases per year, like good releases, of course. But it's also hard to, you know, like to release on certain labels because like, so let's say Intech, you know, he's, he has like huge schedules and probably if you sign now, you might be releasing in eight, nine months. So it's hard to program your, your year. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. That's it's, true. it's hard, it's hard, you know, like it's no... Most of the good labels are full because they give space to the artists that keep releasing them. And if they are probably do some collab with like um, various artists, they might fit you in there. But for the rest, it's quite, you never know when you're going to release on the label or when it's going to happen. I have one more question before we wrap up then, right? Which we've been asking every other guest. <laughs> Can you recommend our viewers one DJ set that if they've never seen or heard to go and listen after this show? Oh, wow. Uh, that's, Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, that's really... I mean... You need to be techno? No, Any, anything. Okay. Okay. anything. I will really suggest to listen to Moderate, live set and... Um, you know the, the the thing that keep doing is electronic music but i've been to the their festival like to live set and stuff it was just amazing the visuals the everything the effect and they are really really good apparat is it does have a, like a beautiful voice and i really suggest moderate the moderate uh top i also have the, the album there it was signed and amazing. you know it, it's really really nice really they're amazing Hopefully and they will be back. Sets, and of course your sets. Uh, my sets. <laughs> I, I don't know record a lot of sets because I'm kind of jealous of my track because I spend a lot of time. I, I, I don't really use Beatport many times because I'm going to check on top 100. Of course, I'm proud if you're going to be there, but it's, it's so easy to play the tracks and be top DJs. I kind of go on like Hey Channel on YouTube, either, so, you know, a lot of good quality music. I do found out Bad Camp is one of the best to research signed kind of music. As I said, I don't just play huge artists. I like good music. Good. So I, yeah. I don't care who does that. It's just, uh, it, I take a lot of time on searching set, you know, that kind of music. Excellent. So I don't record a lot. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Anthony. Well, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Fun. It was, uh, it was great you. hearing your, your story and, and how you make music and your, your, your process as well. It's been very interesting. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. It's been Thank a pleasure. Grazie. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next time. Well, guys, uh, thanks again for watching another episode. We've got plenty more great episodes coming in the coming weeks. And um, we're just going to have some Bye. fun with it. So, eh? grazie. And Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>